Last we left you all, a group of two and a group of two and a solo adventurer came together at the Witchlight Carnival. Their goal, to find a Fey Crossing. Why were they seeking this Fey Crossing? For Melon and Rot, they were hired by a warlock to check in on his patron, Zabilna. For Otto and Gromp, an opportunity for adventure. And for Bodhi, a yearning to find something that was lost and taken to the Feywild. Throughout the evening, questions were asked, games were played, rides were enjoyed, monarchs were crowned. Otto, by the way, crowned the Witchlight Monarch. And afterwards, you all utilized the wish that comes from being granted that title to request from the owners of the carnival, Mr. Witch and Light, that they show you the way into the Feywild. They led you into the Hall of Illusions, past mirrors that displayed childhood and adolescent versions of yourselves until you reached a particular mirror, where they taught you the incantation, the rhyme, to activate it. A few of you jumped in immediately, others with a little hesitation. But regardless, each one of you, one at a time, reciting the rhyme and touching your hand to the mirror, were transported from this realm to another. And it is there that we return. We see our five wild things standing at the edge of a raised and broken causeway under a hazy, twilit sky. In the sky, several moon-like bodies can be seen, one silvery, one radiating a lavender light. The sky itself is a blaze of orange and green twilight. Much closer than those celestial bodies in the sky, several creatures, somewhere between jellyfish and cloud, float across the night sky, glowing softly as they bob. The causeway itself on which our five adventurers stand is built from pale stones that glow faintly from within. This causeway towers over the surrounding landscape. Large sections of the road have crumbled away, leaving large gaps between the remaining sections. These sections themselves supported by hundred-foot columns that erupt from the swamp beneath you. And clinging to the bottom of these columns, we see enormous mushrooms, some ten feet across. Beneath you, immediately beneath you, you see a fog-shrouded swamp that spreads out in all directions. From its murk wafts this rotting smell of wet plant and decay. From the thick layer of fog which obscures the ground, there are towering swamp plants. A few have these tendril-like branches that waft in the breeze, even though you don't feel a breeze at the moment. Others have these huge organs at the end of them that inflate and deflate like lungs. The sounds of nature can be heard all around you, a discordant symphony of croaking frogs, singing birds, squelching as the swamp creatures move beneath the blanket of fog. Huge, thick curtains of mist and off in the distance ahead of you, we can see the spires of a magnificent palace. And it is here that we pick up. Oh. Okay, man. First you and foremost. It smells raw. It smells good. It's fertile. It's fertile ground. Never say that word again. I don't like hearing it in your accent. 
turtle. No, I said no. <laughs> okay, guys, first and foremost, as your resident wild checker, I have a couple of things to inform you upon. I need you to put your hands in your pockets. I am not addressing anyone specifically when I say this. Not in any way. He looks directly at Melon. But, uh... Don't. We've been here before. Don't. You got me? Don't eat or touch anything without its permission. You don't know what its plans are tomorrow. Melon, okay? you've never been here in your life. What? Why would you lie to me, man? What do you mean we haven't been here? Feels familiar. It's true. The two of you have never been here. In fact, none of you has been here. Even if through some history, like some of you, you might have visited the Feywild. The Feywild is large and has many realms. It was kind of like yeah. home. Okay, but you heard me about asking stuff, right? Before you eat it? Just like be courteous, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Well, nature isn't courteous, nature is violent. Yeah, but this place, if it chooses violence, it wins. Look all around, man. It's all fucking connected. Like our mycological friends. They communicate underneath us. And he looks down and he puts his hands out. So if you fuck with one leaf, you're fucking with the whole forest. As Bodhi gestures, their feet. As Bodhi gestures downward towards the swamp a hundred feet below you, there is a squelching sound that sounds unpleasantly like a fart. Right at that instant, just a Excuse me. You don't surely believe that we're going to be making it through this entire escapade without hurting a single leaf? Uh, no, man, I'm just talking about, like, think about the grander scheme of things, you know what I mean? If you hurt a leaf, it's probably fucking fine. Just be like, sorry about that, my dude. Don't just, like, expect that they're fine with you, you know what I mean? Tread lightly and understand that you're in their house. You know what I mean, man? Your is the strongest survive. What if we leave all of the apologizing to you, Bodhi, because you are so good at it? Oh, for sure, dude. And then we just don't have to say anything to the you're not nature strong, life you've because died. it'll do it for us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, that was easier than I thought. Uh, anyway, I can help, dude. DM. I do believe last we met, we had seen a hot air balloon of some Correct. sort. Correct. The last thing that, or the, one of the first things you saw before you even got to see the entire scope of what was around you as you were still processing where you were, off in the distance, maybe mile, two miles, you saw coming through the sky and a patchwork hot air balloon with a wicker basket, which suddenly started to careen as if punctured, flailing wildly in the sky before crashing into, or near, at least, what looks like a tower a little off in the distance that you can see. And the direction that this was all going on, is it something that we might be able to follow the causeway for a while to get closer to? Or is no, it more... Unfortunately not. The causeway heading, uh, you know, roughly north to south, and this is to the east of you. So you would have to descend to get there. Side note, Ethan, the red looks nice. Oh, thank you. I was going for an orange, uh, not quite. Uh, so I'm rocking a more garish color this time. I think it works. It's not garish. I'm a whole red ass character. It's perfect. Hey, yeah, but you didn't paint your whole self red. Where's your dedication? Don't you tempt me. Don't you tempt me next hey, time. Hey, hey, we've done body paint before. Pay before. Hell, you've done body paint before. You know how long that takes. I'm well aware. But thank you. I appreciate it. One more luck. Looking off, uh, oh, yes. God. <laughs> <laughs> Looking off into the distance towards where the balloon went down, is there any way to kind of approximate how far away the tower is? Just kind of 
looking down from above. Make me either a survival or a perception check. Your choice. Do you want me to help with that? Because I'm good at those. Yeah, because like I'm it's nature. I yeah, I don't ever really think having another nature. pair of eyes helping me out. <laughs> I have a plus five to both of those. So either you can roll with advantage, or each of you can roll once. Uh, why don't You're I the one who Melon, Melon, Melon what I, I, I'm going to look at the tower in the distance. I'm going to go, Melon, how far away do you think that is? And then you can roll twice. <laughs> First one is a nine. Second is much better, the 15. So it's a dirty 20. And which were you using? Nature or perception? I know you said that they're both plus five. They're but... both the same. Let's survival. Go survival. Oh, survival. Let's go survival. Uh, that sounds more like what he would do. Survival's always a good one. Eyeballing it? It's a little tough to eyeball without... When we're gauging distances, we use our awareness of the relative size of things to do that as part of the process and here you're not sure a hundred percent how big like the plants that you're using or the anything is but you would guess somewhere between two and four miles i don't know quarter of a day is is are you measuring things in travel time or in distance melon what Never mind. I guess our first step is getting off the bridge. Oh, that way. For sure, man. I uh, pointed like the most sheer cliff. <laughs> so, if Melon, you are. We can't fly. Melon, we can't fly. But... Oh, yeah, I can't do that. Anyone who is looking for a way down that isn't jumping, since Melon has found his method, um, can make me a perception check to see if you can spot anything that might be helpful. 17. Mm-hmm. 14. Okay. 23. Nice. 12. 12. All of you. It wasn't a high DC. As you're looking at the it is a pretty it is a far drop 100 feet nothing to nothing to uh, sneer at uh, but as you ins- you look across at the other section the nearest other section of causeway and you look at the column that is holding it up not only are there the large mushrooms towards the bottom half that you noticed at first there are also what look like some vine-like fungus that are growing towards the top. So you all kind of figure, looking at that, it is possible that you might be able to descend using the vines as handholds and maybe climb all the way or use the mushrooms as landing pads. Uh, Bodhi, you go first. You okay? Okay. Uh, he's gonna walk over to um, the uh, the mushroom vine, and he's gonna uh, reach towards it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and use you to get from A to B if that's all right. And he is going to make the attempt. Okay. Could you make me either a nature or athletics check, and tell me which you're using? Because you, for what it's worth, because you preemptively apologized to the plants, I would give you advantage on your nature check. (laughs) Well, I I rolled athletics. Okay. Yeah. What'd you get? 21? Easy. So yeah, you (laughs) slide over the edge, get a hold of one of the vines, and start to make your way down the vines and eventually drop the last 20 feet, getting caught by this very cushiony mushroom 
that you then slide down. But after you slide down, you fall about eight feet through the fog, which clears as you land, as you land with a heavy squelch, with mud coming up to a little past your ankles. Bodie, are you alive? Yeah, it's moist down here. I don't think I like that word either. You... I'm gonna bunny hop down the thingies now. All right, same for you. Anyone who is descending via that way can make me athletics checks or nature checks. Uh, do you want me to go down first, or do you want to go down first so I can watch? Fourteen. Squelch. For you, it is closer to mid-shin. And as you pull your feet out, it's a little tough to move in. To be honest, down here. Um, Bodhi, can... Do you mind... Get up there. Get, Get up right. there right now. Okay. okay. You got That's it. good. You got it. You don't want that shit clumping in your fur. I hear it's a real bitch. Bodhi, you're gonna have to help me get out the mud, please. Oh, come on. You can do it. I'm just kidding. Come on. Here you go. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Adorable. And I, ha 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 ha, will roll for Gromp. Oh, nat 20. Hey. Damn it. I roll a nat 20. You usually roll natural oh. ones for us. Like You really do. Traditionally. Uh, man, what a use of that. You're welcome, Gromp. Uh... <laughs> And uh, to answer a question uh, that I just saw in the chat, Dice Dragon, are those horns on your headphones? Uh, yes, I just kind of crammed them in there. They're actually on a headband that I have under my uh, headphones. I can't see the chat. She's right lying. Now. She was born with them. It's Don't true. let her fool you. Maybe it's, maybe it's Shut out like that. Maybe it's Amazon. So, Rot and Melon, how were you two descending? Were you following the same path or finding a different way down? With it being just the two of us. Me first, you first. Who watches? Uh, you you go first, just in case I fall. You can catch me. All right. I'm going to be using athletics, and I don't ask concerning its nature. It's survival of the fittest. That's the one and only law. Uh, 18. 18. Uh, sorry, no, it's plus 6. 19! No problem at all. You descend down where the handholds end. You look down and see the large cushion of mushrooms that you drop down into. And you squelch into the mud. I stay where the squelch is and I just look up in preparation. I rolled a seven. <laughs> a seven? So you start to descend, and the one of the vines pulls away, taking some of the stone of the pillar with it, and you <laughs> lose your grip and start to tumble off. Because Melon specifically said, looked up getting ready, Melon, I will let you make a... Dexterity saving throw feels right here to catch and reduce the damage. Dexterity. Rod's got like her throw. wings out and she's trying to like get catch some air as she's falling backwards, but her tail's gone over her head, so she's no, gone no, no, to no, a no, backwards no, 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 no. roll. I'm gonna use three of my luck to pump that to a fifteen. Fifteen, wonderful. So with that, you will reduce the bludgeoning damage by half as Rot comes tumbling about 70 feet or so down into you. <clears throat> because it is reduced by half, Rot, you will take five bludgeoning damage. As the two, as the Leonin and the Dragonborn go falling mm -hmm. into the mud with you absorbing the force melon but falling backwards in the process and just it's it's kind of like the 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 wedding carry type thing but goes into because of the force of it and the height it goes into like falling backwards yep. into the mud and you just it is a very graceless fall just a 
flat back where now your entire back half is just coated in this combination of mud, fetid water, and rotting leaves. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you good? Rot, like, snaps her head up, and she's like, <gasps> oh, Ow! 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 I hate this place. I hate it already. Is that why you said to be nice to the plants? Oh, they'll fuck you up. I wasn't rude. No, you weren't at all. You were just totally fine. You, that was just that was just a gross misunderstanding of where to put your feet. It's totally fine. No one's gonna remember this. As Rot Ten minutes from now shouts in pain relatively nearby, hid, previously hidden by the fog, maybe uh ten, fifteen yards away. A large crane takes flight and just soars off over the swamp. I would like to try and attempt to, while still holding Rot, to stand back up because I know Rot hates getting dirty. You are able to do so. Not without getting mud on your shins and knees as well. I don't care. (laughs) So now there is uh, basically from your knees up on your front half that is not mud. Press the digitation, press the digitation, press the digitation, press the digitation, press the digitation. As you start to clean the mud off of Melon, the sticky mud squelching beneath all of your feet, there are tangled mangroves that grow out of pools of rippling water, half hidden by the thick fog, and purple mushrooms that cling to rotting logs and stumps scattered throughout the marsh. Large crickets the size of my forearm chirp serenely before they're snatched out of the air by tongues of hungry frogs that, after the insect retracts into their mouth, look far too small to have eaten something that big, considering they're only about that big. And after witnessing this, you all hear coming from a little off to the east. Several voices joined in what sounds like a marching song. The singing grows louder and you can make out the words of the song. With sticks and stones we'll break your nose, we'll beat you blind and steal your clothes, but none among us can compare to one wily, swift, and stand-up hare. Scoff that's glorious, thief notorious, his deeds are truly meritorious. With a wink and a grin he'll show his cunning, a flash of his scarf he'll take off running quick as a bolt, his long scarf trailing, gasping, gasping, you'll end up flailing, you'll pout, you'll moan, You'll huff, you'll sneer. Thanks to Adon Longscarf, Brig and Prince of Prismere. And what you see emerging from that direction, from the fog, are eight bipedal rabbits, much like your friend Otto, wearing patchwork and muddy clothing. Two of them tug at the reins of a giant snail, not unlike one that you rode just a few hours ago. Those two are, as they come into view in the process of chastising and browbeating the snail, who its eye stalks kind of retract in as it recoils from them. Two of them are carrying clubs that you can see. Two of them are carrying small crossbows as they come into view. Yeah, free concert. Yay, Otto! Wait, well, it looks like... As you say that, one of them raises her hand, and the troop stops singing. (laughs) And she gives a gesture, kind of slicks her ears back, which immediately pop right back up. As she walks over to you, straightening the vest that she's wearing and revealing that she, or as she, with one hand, and holds a club with the other. Well, 
I'm taking it you all aren't from around here, are you? Thought My name... Prep. Well, you, uh... You don't smell like you're from Prismere. What'd you say your name was? Oh, my name? My name is Maxima Fluffybottom. It's a pleasure to meet you. I would die for you. Since you're new here in Prismere, am I right? Oh, yeah, we just visiting, friend. I don't know. Wonderful. Um, well, in that case, I, on behalf of Ogden Longscarf and uh, my crew here, would like to, uh introduce you to something. Here in Prismere, what belongs to you belongs to you. And nobody can take that away. That right there is called the rule of ownership, sweethearts. And now that you're in Bavlorna's domain, which belongs to her, that means that you and everything you have also belongs to her. So, uh, you're gonna hand you over... Only... But what if we're guests? But what if we're guests? Well, you're not. Well, we are. We're visiting, man. That's where a fucking guest is. So when you visit. Well, I am sure she will extend her sweetest hospitality to you should you ever choose to visit her in downfall. But until then, oh. you give us what we're looking for and we won't beat you black and blue for breaking the law. How's that sound? Oh, holy shit. Wow. Well, that's not it's against, it's against the law to visit. No, oh, yep. certainly not. You are more than welcome to visit, but since everything in this domain belongs to Bavlorna Blackstraw, um, that means what you have also belongs to her. So the thing that she wants, what I'm going to be taking from you, you got to give. Otherwise, you know, we got to do it the hard way, you know, and no one really wants that. You know, not really. You want anything specifically, or is this like a general statement of collection? I am so tickled pink that you asked. As a matter of fact, there is something that we would like from you. Oh, pink. I, well, Bath Lorna, would like the memory of the best gift you ever received. And as she says that, she pulls off of her belt a gourd. It's a gourd with a stopper that on the top of it has a golden knob. And she holds... And what do we get in return for giving you this memory? Oh, that would be the not getting black, uh, beaten black and blue part of that. Yeah. Yeah. What if I make you a secondary deal? You oh. don't take our memories and you walk away not black and blue. Make me for saying that. You can make me an intimidation check. <clears throat> Guidance? Guidance? So, I want to call out a uh, quick oh, 5 okay. abuse of <laughs> guidance really quick. Guidance requires that an action and that you touch someone. Um, despite how... He is holding me! Goes. Guidance, guidance, guidance. Now, the question is whether you would have the action and the awareness to do it. For this one, sure, since she was saying that and you're holding her. In future, right, we'll I'm simply, so used, simply I'm be so aware used of to... that you have to have the action to do it. I'm so used to Potter's Gate as well right oh, now. Oh, <laughs> un understandable. I get it. I do. And what does guidance give me, Melody? Those are D4, baby! Okay, I'll take it. 22 on Intimidation. Oh. <clears throat> and I'd like to, as she says this, her eyes are going to go wide and kind of sparks are going to come out, and you can see exactly how sharp her teeth are. Oh. Maxima Fluffy Bottom turns around and looks at her crew, and you see a few of them with wide eyes going like... I do so love the taste of rabbit in the morning. Well, um... You know what? As <laughs> that, um, we'll we'll catch up with you later. I'm sure. You know, you're new here. I don't want to start you off with an unpleasant experience in our wonderful uh, realm of hither. Um, I am so sorry for bothering you. Uh, we're just gonna 
be on our uh way. Tucks the gourd away. <clears throat> All right, um, they're, they're good. We're gonna uh head off. But 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 rabbit. Rabbit stew. <laughs> we can have rabbit stew later. As they start to very hurriedly walk off and fade into the mist, the sap, no song this time. Otto, how you doing? You gonna eat me? Shh, shh, shh. shh. I'm not going to eat you. You're a friend. Me. We are friends. That's why I'm not going to eat you. Well, you said... I can like something and like you at the same time. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I like a lot of things. You're in that pile of things I like that maybe I'll actually make into a pile one day just for my own self-indulgence. I don't know, those sides do look pretty juicy. <laughs> uh, Bodhi squeezes Otto no, back. No, you said no. Okay, no. Bad. Okay. No. Sorry. I am you're sorry. You're so good at listening, Melon. You're so good at listening. I'm going to take out my little pack of gold stars and put one on his cheek. Oh. <laughs> you're going to eat me. I'm not going to. Nobody's going to eat you. Look, they left and nobody had to fight. I should be being praised. You should praise me. Yeah, that was pretty badass, but I was ready to fuck somebody up, so whatever. I'm sure you talk gonna... really nice, though. This, oh, that's thank you. Helpful. Yeah, I do, don't yeah. I? It's really cute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what are we doing now? Uh, that no way. way. That way. Uh, Bodhi goes the opposite direction. That wait. you point. Wait, wait. B B Bodhi, 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 Bodhi. We got it. Yeah, yeah. Right, go back that way. But, but that way. No, but, sorry. Bodhi, if the bridge is behind us, that means that the tower was that Oh, God. <laughs> mm. it, it's, it's like... Uh... Sometime that Bodhi's way. Just standing still. I know where. I don't know how long. I don't know where the fuck to go, man. It's not like you've been here before. Nobody knows where to go. We just have a general direction. And you know what? We're, I feel like we're going to have a great time if I get to threaten more rabbits. That was so much fun. And she's going to jump down out of Melon's arms and start tromping like up to the knees <coughs> in mud. Just off into the woods. In the oh, something I should probably tell you, uh... Uh, that if you, I mean, feel free to be as spice cakes as you want. Unless we are guessing someone's home. It's a pretty customary right here in this whole fucking place that you don't piss off the host. Could it be argued that the swamp is the home of lots of things? You, you get what I'm saying, though, man. I mean, don't don't bite the hands of Fiji kind of thing. Don't shoot where you eat. That kind of when when that, Bodhi that says bite the hand that feeds you, Rot gives like him like the big toothy smile <laughs> that she just gave the rabbits. Yeah, hot. <laughs> but you get it though, right? Yeah, yeah, you get it. And then he turns and he goes a direction. Bodhi, huh. Bodhi. <laughs> Oh this man, way. sorry about that. <laughs> I like, love you idiots so much. Kinda know where we're going. It's that way. That trail we blaze. Yo, yeah, cool. I, I do have a question though. Rod, how much do you believe in Malin's directional navigation skills? Un un unto death. Okay. It's a good amount. So you all start heading that direction. I would like, with Melon spearheading this, could you roll me a survival check really quick? Hell yeah, I can! Ooh, 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 that's a dirty 20. Wonderful. 15 plus 5. You managed to keep a pretty good eye on the tower as you walk through the swamp. And you... As you all look around, you get a better look at this area, and it is, in many ways, your archetypal gross swamp, with the addition of strange, unusually sized, large and small flora and fauna 
bioluminescent mushrooms that wink on and off underneath the surface of the muck. Strange sprawling vines that grow up the leaning and broken and rotten trees. And everywhere you go, the smell is... You know how you can go nose blind to a lot of things? There is a limit to how to what you can go nose blind to in a small amount of time, and it has not been long enough for you all to not notice how wretched this swamp smells. Oh, it smells like that den. It smells like something died and I just stepped in it. You know the one, right? We don't need to talk about that. It's making me kind of feel a little bit nauseous. But it was so You know what it smells like, right? Don't say it. Don't say it. You know what it smells like? No, don't say it. I'm begging you. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. It smells like if you stepped in that thing you talked about and then somebody ate that thing and then shit it out, it's that. I was waiting for you to like say shit, rot. I was waiting for you to say rot. It smells like rot, and but that was way worse. That was somehow, <laughs> that that was somehow been, far worse. That would have been so clever, man. You yeah, well. That, well, that's why I thought of it, and not you. Well, that was wait. Wait. No, it's like rot. Victory. <laughs> it's okay. I'm watching you. <laughs> Melanie, you better keep her in gear, man. She's getting feisty, feist. I was born feisty. Also, I think I just stepped on a slug. Oh shit, man! Could one of you do me a favor? Sorry, my dude. Roll me a d10. Whoever would like to take this one. I've been rolling a lot. I will abstain from this one. I think Whoever. Otto should do it. Yeah, Otto needs to roll something. No, he's a soup man. Six? Six? Okay. Ooh. Noted. As you all begin traveling, what is every, or as you all continue traveling, it's been about an hour. Movement through the swamp is tough. This is difficult terrain. So you are moving at half speed through this. But what is everyone's passive perception? So I don't have to pull up everyone's sheet really quick. Fifteen. Fifteen. Nice. Twelve. Fourteen. Teen. And as so, I recall, I think Melon was at the front. Yes, you were leading the way. Yay. So, Melon, Otto, are you still on Bodhi's shoulders? Okay. Yep. So then, Bodhi, Melon, and Rod. For, I would actually argue Rod might notice this first because of the height difference between Rod and and the other two who are walking. The water around you is starting to rise slowly at first. But what was just a muddy revealed floor of the swamp that you had to pull your feet through is becoming soaking with the fetid swamp waters. At first, just puddles. And then above the tops of your toes and then up to your ankles and after about a minute and a half or so after you first notice the puddles it's about a foot deep you know you know what I, I'm done with this walking thing I don't think I like this walking thing pick me up Melon pick me up yep on the shoulders doesn't matter I'm nasty legs over at the front and Bodhi, I saw a hand. I have a um, kind of mechanical question. Um, I uh, am a turtle, mm -hmm. and my back is kind of like a raft. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. How many hypothetical fronds could I fit atop my back raft? While is this while swimming? Is that your question? Mm -hmm. Have you ever swum? with friends on your back before? You carried stuff. Not like So you're not really people. sure 
You can certainly, when the time comes, try. That oh, is a great find idea. Out. You know, you feel like very you confident that. that you could. I'm pretty sure you know, I could deal do with it. Auto, Grump and Melon. Sure. I'm pretty sure I could do Auto and Rot for sure. I was just, <laughs> just, just trying to help out the Mongol Franz. After. Oh, y'all bigger folk could figure it out. About another minute after Melon picks you up, Rot, all of you are now well aware of that water because it's about two and a half feet deep now. And... This isn't a swamp anymore, it's a pond. Though The two of you with 15 passives, so Melon and Otto, see very briefly just a glimpse off in the distance to your left as you're walking of what looks like water gushing forth from a well. Oh, it looks like a whale's busted. Yeah, that's gonna get, that's, that's gonna rise pretty quickly. Hey, hey, hey. I want to say right now, Ethan, that's some low-hanging fruit for a joke and I'm not taking it. I'm not even sure what that joke would be, but I, I respect well, you for not doing well, it. Well, well, well. Oh. I do. <laughs> Rob says I it out it. loud. I... <laughs> I, oh, I hate that I have to make note of what time that occurred so I can clip that as much as it pains me, you... Ugh. <laughs> oh, so I far food. tonight, we have I had a to rot, rot, pun, and a well, well, well. <sighs> so good. I'm dying inside that my life. Okay. so good! <laughs> I wanted to, but I thought I was better than that. <laughs> Three feet. Oh, um, guys, this water's rising. And it I is think... filthy. This is far from clear water. Can can we kind of speed up toward the tower? Because I don't know if we're going to make it. Okay, get on my back if it gets too high. Oh my God, is it just pooling here? It is, as you look around... It's not just where you are. The muddy swamp floor that you saw all around you is now water with stumps, small stumps that you saw just a minute ago, now only visible by the caps of the mushrooms growing atop them that still emerge from the water. This whole place is about to become an ocean. And I didn't pack a boat. I'm a boat. You're a raft if you squint. I'm, I'm, yeah, you're right. I didn't have sides to go up, so I'm a raft for sure, dude. But, but yeah. Yeah, but my back can be like a raft. Just don't step on the purple ones. I'm trying to cultivate them. Yeah, we'll Noted. use it for a backup plan. Uh, Get it? Back up. <sighs> Is anybody... uh, uh, <laughs> Ethan, are there like any so you said there's an actual well, yes? I mean that's what it looked like off in the distance. The two of you just noticed it because of the peripheral ability of noticing motion. You just saw water gushing forth from a place. Are there any form of structures on the ground floor or up in the trees? You can make me a perception check. Sure, why not? Ooh, 11. 11. You do not see any structures in the trees. You do not see any structures on ground level. The only things that could be qualified as a structure that you see from here is the tower that you've been heading to and that thing that you saw gouting water. Though, as you look right now, you don't actually currently see it. Do you think if we stuffed a rag in it, it would stop dripping? Kind of like a sink. Or a rock. Right. Or we could put Bodie in it. I'm sure he's big enough to fit. Melody. Yeah, whatever, man. That way. Yeah. We need Bodie to fit. Which way are you pointing? Uh, towards the small structure that uh, we can see in the distance, I think. There he goes. Oh, <laughs> Lord, he goes. <laughs> you start heading that way? Yep. The water at this point is a full five feet deep. 
What I can got, tell like, you. There on me now. And as you are walking, sloshing through the water, you, anyone who has walked in a pool knows how difficult it can be to do that, even when there aren't logs, undergrowth, and things that you feel darting past your legs. It is slow going here. This is half speed if you are not swimming. Make me Bodhi and Melon be... I would have Gromp do this, but he's a little distracted. Um, because you are the... You are two of the three currently walking. Make me... In... Either intelligence checks or perception check. Your choice. Perception! My intelligence is bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. But do you want to go first? Can I help Bodhi? <laughs> can, I, can, can I be Bodhi's second the die? Is, the die has been it. cast. What'd you get, Bodhi? Nine. Nine. Okay. Melon? Perception? 24. Okay. I rolled a 19. You, Melon, stop for a second. Let the water that you were sloshing through just settle at the top of your chest. You wait a second. You slowly count to ten in your head. The water doesn't go up any further. It seems it has stopped rising. Okay. Okay. What was it? Did you did something bite you? No, it was sun rising. Do you want me to bite it back? It, it, it's it's she's probably like to here now, like just below the shoulders. Oh, it's done. Yeah, you know it's done. What's done? Water. The water's done with what? Melon, use words. I'm not under water now. Very good, Melon. Rock, come on. Give it's it's done. Um, I'm going up. I already gave him, one, up. Star. Already gave him up. one star today. I can't give him a second one or it'll go to his head. It's I'm going up. Uh, does, so, Bodhi, I think... Bodhi, how tall is Bodhi? Is Bodhi doing that long He's... tortoise neck thing to keep his head above water? 10%. Yeah. Like, mostly neck. <laughs> yeah, I'm all neck, baby. With a little joint in the top. Marsh is joints stored in his shell and bag. You my shell, man. Where's his shell? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> this could be worse. We can ru- we can roll some new it. ones. Uh- <laughs> it's fine. No big deal, man. I'll make some new ones. Dry it all out here. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just how the character me saying it's like, "Oh no, boy, he lost his joints. <laughs> what yeah, he's gonna do to whatever get to him?" And that is when betray- I- Bodhi betrayed the party. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I guess the blood's drying on the trident, but uh, you're probably fucking soaked right now. It's okay. Once we start a fire somewhere, I'll just lay them all out and watch them, make sure it's okay. But stand back at least 10 feet. I was going to say, that's how you get the whole swamp high, Bodie. Yeah, okay. it is. Mm. Hey, I've done it before. It seems to like it, so maybe that's the end. Ooh, that's going to be a fun adventure for later. Uh, about how far are we from the this structure? As it comes into view, this well uh, is about nine feet tall so rises about four feet above the water still and there is just the final droplets of water that continue to splash into the very high waters of the swamp now but it seems to have stopped its gouting or its gushing of water by the time it gets within view. It's about 80 feet from you right now. Hey, Otto, do you think we can get the two uh, big boys to give us a boost? See, why not? Hey, can you pick us up? 
I didn't mean right now. I didn't mean right oh, now. Oh, okay, okay. I meant late. I meant later, over there. And I'm gonna point towards the direction that we're looking at. I will go towards that direction. I will reluctantly follow. As I feel like we're going the wrong way, man. Bodhi, I'm starting to get the feeling that your right way would lead us off a cliff, but it's just like this little thing that I feel. I mean, yeah, where we're yeah, going is just... technically kind of off to the left of right there. Just walk it off, right? It'll it's go weird. Away. I'm not going to walk gonna anywhere. Right I'd be underwater. I'm pretty sure she'd drown. Well, then don't... Don't maybe abstain from that activity. I You're mean, the one who said my it. Advice. Me. Wait, Rock, can I you just... swim? I have never tried. You want to learn right now? No, I, got I don't want to learn right up. now. No, I don't want to. Are you no. sure? Look, no, it looks place. terrible. Look, it's you... it's dark water and there's things swimming in it. Why would I want to try now? Because you're a badass and you start on level 5 instead of level 1, so that any time after this, it's a better experience. You know what I'm feeling right now? I'm feeling about level 2 and a fresh level 2 with that. <laughs> Swimming's fun. Ethan, is there like a tree with like a low hanging branch that I can lift Rot up to so she can grab and climb onto it and then just rest peacefully? There are the. So, tree, there are some rotting, soaking, stinking trees, and there are the strange swamp plants that you've never really seen before. There are tall plant life. There is tall plant life relatively nearby, yeah. Side note with that. Looking at the plant life, does it look like there's a water level that goes up to where this goes, potentially, like if this is a common occurrence? I will say, you don't see a water line higher than this. If there were a visible water line at this mark, it would be currently, you know, fairly tough to see with the water at this height, but a damn good question. And one that you can check out more thoroughly if the waters are ever not this tall. No, oh, no. Uh, I mean, we don't need to show you that. The water doesn't get higher than this. I mean, look at that you tree. Just... You can see the moss. It goes there. And it doesn't go below that. That's oddly thoughtful of you, Melon. How out of character. Wow. I know things. Good job, Melon. It's rare, but I know things. Great job, Melly. It's very rare. <laughs> so what are you all doing? We want to leave it alone? No, I want to look at it. Or do you want me to go look at it because I can swim? I, I might be able to swim. Let, let's just all go there. We're a party. We're an adventuring party. We go places together. We do fun <gasps> things. You know that word the is fuck is happening? Don't say, that. Don't say that. Is she high? Did you give her some of your mushrooms? I am right. I'm trying right. to be positive. Dog. I love it. It's I'm not a dog. So okay, I hate doing dogs. That. Okay, well, you're backsliding, but it's okay. You're still doing great. Let's go that way. Sloshing. Wrong way. I hate this. I hate it. Wrong way. Calling this way. Bodie Bodie, back. Bodie, 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 Bodie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we gotta, go, we gotta go back around the other way. <laughs> Trump, would you please yeah. go get her? All the mud feels the same. I, I... Yeah, it's cool. Him. Sorry, sorry. Them. You know, we could get a stick and tie a carrot to it and give it to Otto. <laughs> hey. First of all, not that all is, rabbit. Is. That's a very big. It wasn't mistake. for you, Otto. I, I wasn't making a rabbit joke. I was making a steer the turtle joke. The misconception that all rabbits like carrots. Do you like carrots? I don't. You don't? You are I lying. Don't. You are lying to me. I'm not lying. Need an inside check. <laughs> is Otto lying about not liking carrots? 
<laughs> roll it if you want to roll it. Fucking okay, 18 plus 5, 23. Did you get your What'd you say? for that? I did! I fucking oh, did! Fuck. What did you get? I got a 23. You still beat me. I got a 22. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, I, are you, first of all, Otto, are you lying? I'm not. But, Legitimately, I'm not. because he rolled a 22 on Persuasion and you rolled higher than that, you remain slightly unconvinced. X out. For now. <laughs> <laughs> so, are Otto and Gro or Otto and Rot getting lifted up now by Bodhi and Melon? As the two of you are lifted to the top of this well, to the ring of hewn stone at the top. First of all, you look in and there is not water immediately at the surface. It seems to be descending through the well. But also as you look down the well, you start to see two lights in the water shimmering at first from underneath dim, barely noticeable, and they grow slightly, slightly brighter, only about baseball-sized, as they silently, and without any dripping water following afterwards, rise from the waters of the well and up in front of the two of you. They glow a soft, moonlight color and they bob slightly in the air what are these rot i was hoping you would know i don't know anything about this place greetings travelers may i may we inquire of your names no, 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 With the wild thing. Still. What'd you say, uh, My name is Phil. And what did you say, uh, Bodhi? I said, no, 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 no. And I said, we're the wild things. And he puts his arms out and he pushes them away from the well. Don't give out your real name when asked. I think we're actually up above they, you. Like, yes, they are me. significantly, they are up. Don't do it! Phil, what brings you and your friends to hither? Um, I asked you. Go on. Well, we're we're just here to to. We kind of got lost, but we're just adventuring and around and and stuff. So it's been fun. We met some other rabbit people that look like me. Not We're also lost, looking for some trained. people. Yes. What? No. Shush, Melon. We're also looking for some people. Looking. And we're hungry. For friends and food, then. Yeah. Well, we cannot wander far from the well. We have not seen many in a long time. We wish you safe travels. Beware the waters. They rise and fall. Don't you live in the thing that makes the waters? Yes. Forever. Are you stuck in there? Yes. When the waters first rose, not all of us were able to escape it. As they bob and pulse slightly as they speak. We...
drown and live here forever now. What are your names? Names. Names. We can no longer remember our names. Well, Otto could probably give you some new ones. He's pretty yeah. good about that kind of thing. You know, like, you're you're the friendly sort. You can name floating light bubbles. Would you like new names? If you wish, we will surely forget them again. Well, I won't forget you. So we'll always know who you are. Um. Uh. You. Your name will be okay. I don't know what they are. Let me get you in a second. Your name will be Shane. Um, Shane. Yeah, it's a unisex name. You can be you can be whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's an easy name. And Alex. Alex isn't well. I guess it would be. I suppose. Can be. Mm, you're right. Actually, that's a great one. I like Alex. And they just kind of bob there. Don't seem to respond. Cool. So, um, Shane and Alex, um, how long, you said, it's, how long has it been since you've been in the well? Since Bavlona flooded it. Oh. We do not know when. Based on, kind of, since Bavlona probably took over this place, when, uh, everything went down with splitting up the realms that we know about when and i'm pretty sure the old man uh madrick told us when he lost contact with his patron according about to, how long ago was that according to both madrick and kettle steam the kenku it's been about a year uh since they've had contact with zibilna Right, but a year for them a is not the necessarily a plane. year here. Gotcha. Okay. Mm. So it really, there's no way to tell. Not based off of the information that you currently have. Not really. Well, that's just too bad. I'm sorry. Is there anything neat in the well? Are you asking them or are you asking Yes, I'm asking oh, them. Okay. No, no, I'm asking them. That's. I'm so sorry you drowned, but is there something cool down there? Nothing we know of. Good luck finding your friends and food. Thanks. You're very helpful. And they just kind of... Slowly, if you just stand there. As long as you stand staring at them, they will stay floating. But as soon as you turn and kind of dismiss your attention, they will slowly start to descend back into the well. Can we that get down here now? You know, it does occur to me, it probably, if we could close this somehow, it probably wouldn't flood anymore. Yeah, we could probably give them a proper burial. You say that, that we could close this as they are in the process of floating back down to the water, and they mm. rise oh God. quickly back out of it. You will undo what Bavlona has done? Would you like that? Yes. Yes, very much. The hag is cruel. She has turned our home into something rotten. So it wasn't always a swamp? No. Not always like this at all. It was beautiful and good. If you wish 
to help to undo this, we cannot help much, but we can help a little. And each one of them, or the two of them, start to, one around you, Otto, and one around you, Rot, just around your heads, just kind of circle, slowly. And you feel this slight warmth run down your spine, gone as quickly as it's there. The two of you have a D4 at your disposal that any time in the next 24 hours you can use to add to a single ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. So you have one use of guidance, essentially that lasts for the next 24 hours. It is not much, but it is all we have to give. Well, well, thank you. Um, and if it means a lot to you, then uh, me and my friends will, will help make it right or try to at least. I'm going to lean over into Otto. I'm going to go, we, we probably can't ask Light Bubbles to pay us to do this, can we? I don't think that they have wallets. Right, it's always about money. Sometimes yes, you just yes, do... Is. No, sometimes yes, you is. just do things out of the kindness of your heart. No, you don't. That's yes, what suckers do. do. Well, I'm not a sucker, all yes, right? Yes, you are. Well... <laughs> At least I can swim. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we will help you. Um, how how do you think we can help? They silently bob and their light dims for a second. We do not know. I think it's just going to be a really big rock. Would a rock over this might help? Well, you don't know. Maybe, maybe a rock's over this I water. Don't know. Will go. I was just guessing. I, I mean, I'm asking you. As the two of you bicker and discuss amongst yourselves, they once again start to descend down the well. So, I think we can turn around and kind of kick our legs over the edge of the well, so we can look down at our much bigger companions. Where the fuck was that? Some glowing soap bubbles want us to plug the well. Oh, shit. Is it easy? What do you mean, is it easy? No, it's a giant plug well it. that shoots water out of it. Well, I mean, what if we just put something big and heavy in it? Yeah, I said a rock. But oh, where, shit. Are gonna, cool. where are we going to find a rock big enough to plug this thing? No. Get, get Bodie put upside down on there. Done. We need Bodie, Melon. Oh yeah. I mean, you could just come pick me up if you want. Yeah, but, but then uh, floods again the second we unplug you. Yeah, it's not really a long-term situation. More of a band-aid, which you, you know you really should deal with. And Bodie, one thing as this conversation mm-hmm. above was happening you were listening, you suddenly were hit with a nagging sensation. A long time ago, you lost something. And you can't explain why. But you feel like it's here, somewhere in Hither. You aren't sure where. You aren't even sure the origin of this feeling. But as this name is happening, or as this discussion is happening, as the name Bavlorna Blightstraw is said, you can't help but firmly believe that it is somewhere here in Hither. When I begin to believe that, listening to all of this, uh, Bodhi is going to look around 
you know, really kind of like soak up the moment of feeling this sense of security and knowing that he's going to fill a hole that he's known was there for a while, but he just tried to put a bandaid over it. <laughs> and um, he goes to pull out his joint and light it uh, and it fizzles because it's wet and he just starts chewing on it like a carrot. Yeah, it's all gonna be okay. Have any of you ever had champagne? Yeah. Do you know what happened? I had it once, it was amazing, and then it came out my nose, because if you shake it really hard, the cork pops out. So, that's what I'm thinking. If we just put something like a stump in here, it's gonna be like a cork. It'll just pop right out if it can't hold the water in. So we gotta find something that isn't gonna pop out like a champagne cork. A stump and then a rock. A stump and then a rock. No, no! Damn it, now I'm thinking like him. Stump rock. Cool. Fun fact, stump rock is a very popular form of music in uh, Hither. In that case, <laughs> we need to find a rock band and stuff them in the well. <laughs> what if they were the rabbit people? Can we just fill the well with the rabbits? <laughs> <laughs> no! Like an amplification no. of their concert. Just think about how many people they could hear their lovely song from 600 feet in the air. Otto and Rod, could the two of you make me perception checks while you are still atop uh, the well? Six. 25. Rot, you are uh, too distraught by the fact that you thought like Melon for a moment. Um, I'm proc. And she's busy she's, she's imagining stuffing rabbits in the well to pick it up. <laughs> Otto, you stand up on the hewn ring of the well and you look out over the swamp. And far off in the distance, in one direction, you see another thing that looks like it might be a well like this. And that causes you to turn and squint and look. And you see another over there. And another. So from where you're standing, you can see three more. Barely. Barely can you see them. Only because you've got a 20 plus are you able to see so many. They are not close. But there are others. Well. Well, well. For our plan to work, it's going to be a little bit harder than that. What do you say that for? Because there's another well over there, there's another well over there, and there's another well over here. There's more than one, and there's probably more throughout this whole swamp. If it was a forest, like they said beforehand, and it got polluted by some nasty, nasty swamp hag, we're gonna need a lot of rocks. I don't think they'll be that easy to fix. Why don't we at least start with one and then see where the day takes us? It's really smart, man. Alright, we could do that. Um let's find a rock. A a big more a boulder, maybe? Because boulders are bigger than rocks, right? Bodie, how much do you weigh? A cool spelt 450 pounds. Do you think you could lift that? Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Why not? You sound very And optimistic. if not... Just like three big boys here, they can lift it. Yeah, I mean, we're part of a team. Are you calling, so... Grump, are you calling Grump a big boy? Yeah. Everyone's sure. a big boy compared to me. Okay, yeah, but oh, Grump has oh. arms like... Like mine, they're just really. I think it's just Dandy. the fur that makes him look big. Grump, well, you can't just be saying strong. that about people's fur. Like, he's pretty strong. Watch me. I am. Grump just silently internalizing all of this. <laughs> oh, he's gonna, he's 
gonna write about it in his journal, and we're gonna be painted in a negative light. Rob, you make sure that. you sing a sad song about how skinny your arms are later. Let's go find the rock. Oh, I'm doing this, man. You know, you know what? Going, man. You leave a buddy alone. You know he's gonna write a song about you, and then it's gonna be like it's gonna be. It's like gonna be song. a banger, is what it's gonna be. I'm gonna jump yeah, down into Melon's arms. Oh. You could probably just step right up to his shoulders because they're right there. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to stand on Millen's shoulders like a little captain of a sinking ship. Beautiful. I assume you'd probably use your wings as like, okay, it's kind of flap that way so I can bounce that way. Flap that way so I can bounce that way. So you, t- the two who were up descend and you all once again begin heading towards the tower where you, at least in the general vicinity, saw the balloon, the hot air balloon, crash upon your arrival. It takes you all, especially with the high waters, another hour, hour and a half of wading through this. By the time it starts to come into view, you have that unpleasant... I'm not sure how it would manifest for a Leonin, uh, but, you know, if you stay in the bath too long, it can almost start to hurt a little bit if you're in water too long and you feel uncomfortable after having waded through water essentially for an hour and a half straight. And Bodhi. You're starting to get crinkly. Except for like a number of spots which aren't getting crinkly because there's scar damage there. And eventually a crumbling stone tower comes into view rising out of the swamp. It is leaning at a nearly improbable angle that is clearly threatening to keel over, it seems like, at any time. There are black brambles around the base that grow heavy and thick in certain regions and have sharp, long thorns. From one of the crenellations on the lower side of the tower's peak. Yeah, there's my uh, SAT word of the day, or my fantasy nerd word of the day. Um, From the crenellations on the lower side of the tower's peak, dangling about 30 feet above the surface of the swamp is a basket. A wicker basket. Large enough, it looks like, to have once been the basket of the hot air balloon. And as you... Oh, as it comes into view, still about a hundred feet or so from you, what are you doing? Is the water up to the tower, or is the tower sitting above the water? I mean, the tower is about 45 feet up... You know, I meant, like, can it, can we see a door, or would the door technically be underwater kind of thing? From where you currently are, you do not see a door. Is the tower made of stone? Yes. You know... We could push the whole thing over and then stuff the Come rocks on. in the well. A lot of rocks. Big rocks. I don't Let's know if you had it. We start wrecking people's shit, they're gonna get pretty pissed about it. Can Does I kinda do like somebody a, lives there? Can I kinda do like a squat with my head underwater and see if I can see anything? Because like water's fine. I like water. You duck down to see if you can get a view like a small door through the water. You can only see about 10 feet under the water. It is okay, muck closer and muck. Um, I mean, so you would have to get within 10 feet if you're wanting to see underwater. I'm going to kind of like keep my hands against the tower and go around it. We're, we're 100 feet style. from the tower, Melon. Yeah, you're still 100 feet. I'm getting closer. Okay. So as yeah. you start to wade through the water, the sloshing. Wading through the water. Uh, Does anybody remember if there was someone in the balloon basket? I don't recall. Was there? Did we hear screaming? Psst. Did I hear screaming? You there? <clears throat> I require your aid. 
you hear from above you. Can the man we in the basket any? that fail? You can we see, see anybody? Anyone. Because the bottom of the basket is facing you, roughly. Who is addressing us? Shh, shh, shh. You hear a shushing from above you. Shh. Did, he, did they just shush me? They just shushed you. Wow, rude. There are two serpents asleep um, <clears throat> in the waters nearby the door. Um, if you awaken them, they might put the squeeze on you, so to speak, or even worse, to devour me, so voices... Oh, for now. Aren't you, like, 40 feet in the air? How are they going to devour you? Well, I, I'm in a bit of a predicament, a, a, a bind, you might say. Um, I, <laughs> Sir Tavalar, as one of the Summer Queen's loyal servants, ask that you Sir. free me. You see, I was in the midst of a quite daring and dashing escape, if I may say so myself, from the vile Bavlona Brightstraw when our balloon was set upon by an ill wind and set plummeting to its current and quite unfortunate location. My pilot, the Honorable Wigglewog, did not survive, unfortunately. I have been trapped up here for a little while now, <clears throat> Help me, and for I must tell my queen. She is wise, but not all-knowing. That is why I was sent to gather information and see what had been happening here. And now that I have, I must return to her quickly to inform her of what has occurred. And you want us to do what exactly? Help me, please. Are, are you stuck? Yeah. Um, yes, I am a bit um, locked up in here at the moment. Can't really um, get out on my own. Cage, you see. Don't have the key. So there's a... I'm going to turn to look at my companions. So there's a locked cage in the basket of the hot air balloon that cra- Does anything here make sense? Does like, anything why? make sense? No. Tavalier. Let's do it anyways. Uh, Tavala. Tavala. Uh, uh, all right. If you don't Ta- mind. Sorry. No, it, it's fine. Very, very fine. Uh, but shh, 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 shh. Why are you locked up? Um, I was captured by the mm, nasty hag blight straw. Uh, I was able to, with the assistance of Several brave individuals escape in this balloon. Unfortunately, we were not able to escape with the key uh, to the cage. So, still in a bit of a bad situation, though a little bit better than I was a few hours ago. So you consider hanging from a crumbling tower surrounded by snakes in a better situation? Well, that lets you know where I was. Insight check. Make it. Hmm. What you looking for? I'm listening for the inflection of his voice, whether or not he's lying, or he could be like a deflection of whatnot. So, cool. That's what I'm looking for. Nine plus five. Fourteen. Um, he not only seems to be telling the truth, uh, you get no indication of ill intent. Now, Otto, you remember what I said about doing things for free? It's for suckers. Suckers? No. Oh, what about uh, nobility helping those in need? <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> but we're not nobility. We all freaking help you, man. Yeah, but it's gonna be bad if I could break a it. noble soul down below. Appreciate oh, what? He, he works for the queen. Shh, hush, hush. And I'm going to make a check with you all shouting. Oh, we were my... hissing under our breaths. You certainly oh, I didn't. were. Um, and with a nat twenty, my second, 
this time for well. an NPC, you hear something. Speaking of hissing under your breath, you hear a hissing sound as you see coming around the tower, one on each side, two large shapes sw swimming on the top of the Throw water, them. each one about 13, 14 feet long, probably about four or five feet across. And we, ladies and gentlemen and gentlefolk, for the first time in this campaign, I need you to roll initiative. Oh my god! My guys are downstairs. Now, I have to roll an air just a reminder to everyone watching, we are, for the ease of the stream, um, using Theater of the Mind for our maps. 19. 18. 19. Uh, which one of you has the higher dexterity? Oh, probably a Mav. 17. I have a 14 dex. Yep. So, auto first, then Melon. And, and what did you say you got, Rot? 18. 18. Okay, that is cool. This is the first character I've ever played who doesn't have a negative initiative modifier. Oh my god, that's right. You don't have a net one. Bodhi, what did you get? 14. 14, okay. And Romp got the lowest. So, these two large constrictor snakes start moving, swimming your direction through the water, swimming quite lithely through the water, especially for their size. Who was leading? Actually, you were all standing around pretty equally at this point. So I'm going to do figure out by random roll who they go for first. And does anybody speak snake? I can. The then tell them to bug off. First one, you did raise your hand. Funny enough, Melon, and that is what the die indicated as well. The first one swims through the water. It started about. 30 feet away from you and manages to close the distance up to Let's you. see some tree legs, slugs. And is going to try to constrict you. But before it does so, before it reaches you, you all hear a hefty reward Pavlona will give us for these. As it starts to wrap around you and try to constrict you. It has a plus six to hit. Ooh, you're looking for an 18. Got a 16 on the die. So, Ow. it wraps around you, first around your legs under the water, as you feel your entire movement go, or capabilities go away. And as it starts to crush you, it is going to deal. Oh no. Oh dear. Um, 19 bludgeoning damage. I'm out. <gasps> oh lord. Unconscious. Oh, that's your cleric. Out. <laughs> Level two, folks. That is its go. The second one in the initiative order is auto. Melon, melons. I think melons hurt real bad. What is happening down there? Under, What's and happening? that's it. That's all you see. Fight, uh, fight, friends! I, Do not give in. I'm just gonna take an arrow and shoot at the one that's holding. Roll to hit. In fifth edition, Wait, there the is no one? disadvantage for sh or penalty for shooting into combat. So the second one is still about thirty feet back from you all. Because it hasn't gone. I'll deal, I'll deal with the one that's in front. Deal with the problem in front. Yep. Makes sense to me. You can, with this, me going down, do I gain a point of exhaustion? No, we're not doing that in this game. Oh, okay. thank God. No, we are. This is not one of Ethan's <laughs> hardcore <laughs> games. No. Uh, All right, 17. For, 17, easy hit. 
All right. Um. Five plus three. Five plus three damage. damage? Yes. Okay. One d eight plus three. You send it into where the portion of the snake that is out of the water, and as it impacts, there is a. Let him go! Oh no. We won't let him go. But maybe a snack is allowed before we return the rest of you to Babylon. Next up then, any movement from you, Otto? Nope, or- I'm I'm gonna stay on Bodie's back. That's right. where I'm at. Melon, I am going to make a roll. Would you DM me what it is so I can mark it down on the sheet? Sure. I will let you know. Excellent. I don't need to know this. Or everybody else doesn't need to know this because it's hilarious. All right. So a secret that is one of the house rules. I did say that when we were playing, I would make note of any house rules when they came relevant for the first time. In my games, I do like to keep death save secret, and that is something we all agreed upon in Session Zero. So, the other players will not know whether Melon just passed, failed, or critically failed his death save. And will I tell them? Hell no, I won't, because it's funny that way. And I (laughs) respect it. That will bring up Rot. Rot, question for you. Are you swimming? When Melon was dragged under by the snake, she definitely fell okay. in the water. So you are having to swim as best you can. The, what I think was going on for the first couple of seconds was just wild thrashing, and that might still be going on. Mm, but I think because Melon is now underwater and there is blood in the water, I think the, what she's done is taken her wings and spread them out as far as she can on top of the water. Uh, like a raft. She's not moving. In fact, she's staying very, very still. I have the but strangest she's... recollection of that scene in Dark Crystal where they take down one of the bats and it's just floating in the water. That is what is going on. I mean, except there's a you, little dragon head sticking have up. Have you seen bats swim? It's kind of like that, I would think. I know what I'm looking up after the session. Oh my god, they can swim. It's great. It's just like they're using their hold wings on, and they're flying. I, I want to hear it. I want to hear it, but... I have to keep combat rolling. I'll look it up after the session, and everyone else should look up bat swimming now while you can. Rot, what are you up to? I think Rot is going to hiss, no reward from Bavlona is worth your... From Bavlona, yes. Is worth your life! Let him go! And uh, she is going to cast a spell... She's going to cast Dissonant Whispers at the one holding Ooh. Melon. And you see her eyes just get consumed with black and then crackle with purple electricity. You need to give me a wisdom saving throw. That's not something they're amazing at, but they're not terrible at it either. I they love that plus spell. zero. Eight. Total failure. Okay. So now I, okay. Uh, On a failed save, you're going to take 3d6 psychic damage and must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from you. You you have to let go of that grapple. So it has to use its reaction to move as far as it can? Yeah, it's got to use its reaction to get the hell out. How does your dissonant whispers manifest? I think what happens is it seems the snake would feel the sensation of something hot like a spark crawling into its ear canal and it burns all the way through its ear canal until it reaches its brain and then starts to shoot fiery lightning through every crevice of its brain going, run, 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 let him go, run! And that is exactly what it says as it uncoils from around Melon and starts darting away ribboning away through the water. Fire! Fire! Run! Run! Ow! And it takes 14 points of psychic damage. And this was on the one that... one uh, holding Melon. Alright, that had already taken damage. Very cool. 
And she prefaced that with no amount of reward from Babylon is worth your life, and then cast that. Got it. The second one. Can yeah. I use my move? Can I use my movement? Absolutely. Sorry. To she doesn't know if she can swim, but what she wants to try to do is get underwater and try to drag Melon up, just trying to thrash wildly, trying to get him back to the surface. So, uh, yes, no problem. For narrative purposes, you are able to pull just the top part of Melon out of the water so that he's not not drowning. Very cool. It is now the second one's turn, the second giant constrictor snake, as it starts to dart forward towards Bodhi. It says, She will give us much if we return this escaped prisoner. Leave him to us, and we leave you be. Uh, you seem to be pretty aggressive from the get-go, so I don't fucking think we're gonna do that, guys. As it Double finger guns! Raised... I'm threatening you. <laughs> she brought it back. As it raises up out of the water about seven feet and whoosh, bites down at you, it will get a 17 total. Straight on the money, baby. Me to beat. It's going to use its bite attack on you for a sweet, sweet total of eight piercing damage. Part of the enormous mouth of this serpent impacts on your shell, which takes some of the damage away, but it still pierces your shoulder pretty deep with its bottom fangs. My chantrelles! I have to ask. As they bite the shell, do they get some shrooms and they're going to start tripping here soon? Well, I mean, if they no, live long enough. Right over here. <laughs> if they live long enough, they might. Um, all right. Then that is the end of its go. That will bring you up, Bodhi. Okay, so this guy done did a piss me off. So I'm going to be like, yeah, man, you asked for it, and I hold with one hand, I hold um, Otto on my shoulder, and with the other hand, I just take my trident and I throw it right at his head. At which one? The one that just attacked me. So it's right up against you. You don't have to throw it. Then I poke him like this! Stab. I stab him! <laughs> All right, roll the stab um, him. Okay, I gotta roll that. I hate rolling digital dice. I got a nine. A nine will miss. As you rear back and go to strike, it manages to just (laughs) out of the way. That's a real son of a bitch. Um, And I'm going to use act. Oh, hold on. Yeah. I just got something. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, be like, well, that's not good enough, and I'm gonna action surge. I can take an additional Ooh. action on my turn. Yes, One time for short rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and stab him again! Okay. Roll to stab him again. You're doing a real, real piss me. 23. That will certainly hit. Sorry, it misses. At level two. Suck it. Dang! Plot <laughs> armor. Balls, six damage. Six damage, all right. As you take two stabs, it manages to dodge the first, but you saw where it was going and you lead it this time. One of the prongs of your uh, trident piercing through the soft underbelly of this serpent. Anything else on your turn? Um, I have a bonus action. Um, and I'm going to utilize it. Second wind, I regain 1d10 plus 2 HP. Absolutely. Now, I just want to ask, and this, oh no, I see your hit points. Never mind. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I kind of got to be doing it. Yeah, yeah, I get, I respect it. All right, roll it. I got a two on the thingy, so, so I got four. Four hit points back. Cody, why are zero. you rolling digital dice when the real ones go click-clack? 
Because my dice tray is not here, hey, and, and I had the shell dice, on. She doesn't have to add, which speeds things up a decent margin. I love you. Okay, 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 but listen though. <laughs> yeah. He he made a whole he made a whole thing about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to do anything else? Nothing. You still have your movement. Keep in mind, you do have a giant I, snake right against you. I will... I want to protect Otto. Okay. So I want to kind of... I want to angle with my shell to the guy and move back if possible. Okay. So you are moving back. It will provoke an attack of opportunity. Fuck! Um... Don't do it, Brett. Uh, you Don't know what? Do I'm, it. I'm just gonna hang out because I kind of need to. So. Good. Probably. Yeah, I just. Call? You guys, I need to internally journal right now. There's a lot going on. So. Can you externally fix Melon? I'm drowning. At the end. I of, can't do that. At the end of Bodie's turn, with you all shouting this, Gromp says, "I can," and sloshes through the water, and his hat falls off as he's. Uh, Fuck! I back up nice, nice hat. hat! Grabs it, puts it back on entirely waterlogged, and sloshes through the water over to where Rot is pulling Melon up. Puts a bugbear paw on Melon's head. You're, you're gonna be alright! And uses... Because the fight was planned, taking your, with you all having five people, so I have to play him. That is going to be Cure Wounds... For 1d8 plus 4, I rolled max. You get 12 back. Awesome. That's one there. All right. And that is going to be the end of Gromp's go. That will bring us to the top of the order. With Dissonant Whispers, it only... It doesn't have to keep running. It was just its reaction, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So after that one wears off, but it's still got a bit of a brain fry. Yeah, and it got 30 feet away using its full movement, and then it stops and rears back <sighs> and starts to dart Keep swimming if you're through. smart. Now there are currently one, two, three targets available because Otto is behind Bodhi. Bodhi is currently engaged with one of the snakes, so it would go to the other two. It is going to go to the one that made it burn, and it is going to roll to bite you. As it gets to the clump of Gromp, Rot, and the now returning to consciousness, Melon, it is going to rear up, and <laughs> as it rears, you hear it say, You look like a tasty morsel. I was thinking the same about you! 17? Oh, um, man. Yeah, okay. It hits. Even four, shield wouldn't save me. Nine piercing damage. I'm out. And as Melon returns to life, or returns to consciousness, Melon, your eyes open bleary with muddy water running down from your eyebrows into your eyes. You are just conscious in time to see the huge jaws come and bite and lift Rot off the ground and then slam her into the water next to you like a celebrating touchdown. Spiked you know into the water. Not the, the worst place I've woken big up. big crack when she hits the water too. Definitely not the worst place we've woken up. So... Melon is back to consciousness. Rot is now at zero. That brings us to Otto. Uh, I'm just going to scream because this is not what I was supposed to be doing today. Um, all right, so context. If I try to shoot the one that's right in front of us, me and Bodhi, I shoot at disadvantage, right? Are you still on Bodhi's shoulders? We'll be yes. determining. Yes, yes, it will be with disadvantage. Cool. I'm going to shoot the one that just bought, that just power so, slammed. So just to be clear on how the disadvantage with ranged attack works, it's not about who you target. It's about the mm -hmm. fact that there is a target engaged in melee range with you. So oh. the fact that there is a snake, an enemy within five feet of you, is what gives your shot disadvantage. So it's the same regardless of what you're shooting at. 
cool. Well, then I'm just gonna stab him. Stab. Um, stab, 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 stab. So pull, snake, stab. And... Pulling out a dagger will be a free action. Short sword. Or short sword. Short sword. Pulling out a short yep. sword. Free action. Yep. And I roll. Let me see. 19 plus 5. Nineteen plus five will hit. Okay, and D six. Just so plus... you all know, just because I trust you all, and for the ease of the narrative, they don't have a high uh, AC. It's really only their speed that protects them. Their AC is a twelve. Okay, cool. Uh, five plus three, eight. Eight more damage to this one. Mm-hmm. Still, uh, so you slice across the belly of it, and it rears back. But with the size of this thing, the slash that you leave looks minimal in comparison to its full enormousness. I tried. I'm sorry. I tried, Vody. I mean, you did. You definitely heard it. But it's it's got a lot more meat on it. You You did great, man. You did great. Are you all right? Yeah. I'll be fine. Okay. Don't worry, don't worry about me. Just, just don't worry about me, man. Any movement or bonus action from you, Otto? Um, I don't. I don't really have bonus actions. Melon now. is on deck with Rot after. That's it for me. Melon, you are up. Rot, you will be there soon. Excellent. Where's Rot? Right behind I'm you, floating in the mm-hmm. water. Well, face actually, down. to your right, floating in the water, face down. Hi. Right. Get better. <laughs> As I say that, I don't know. Yes, you get better, at least. Yes, I said get better, and somehow healing word happens. That is the best spell, <laughs> verbal components ever for healing word. Get better. I love it. Hey, what I what Melvin believes is if he yells like "Stop being sick" and stuff like that, people stop being sick. Amazing how that works. Magic doesn't work. Magic's not real. All right, how much? Ooh, six. Six healing to you, Rot. Nice smash. Because healing word bonus action. So using your action to smash the one that is right in front of you. Roll to hit. Oh, hell yeah. I'll be going with my Warhammer. So I got my shield and Warhammer ready to go now. I was like, and... All right, roll it. Uh, 14 plus 6, 30, 20. That will hit. That is a D8 plus 4. Damage your max damage. 12 damage. This one is now as you crack. And what you, oh, I was about to say, what you see is Melon. It's like, it's like he wasn't even out. It's like... And you, as the snake was coming in for another bite, you just deliver a downward blow right onto the top of its skull, and it rears back in pain. Oh, he looks like he wasn't even out. He is ready to go, having the time of his life. Anything, any movement from you? No, right there in front of it. Okay, then rot. Head you on. Are prone in the water? Um, oh, I mean, stand yeah. up. No, no, she, rot, her, feet can't, her feet can't reach the bottom. Oh, She's not tall rot, enough. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, she's returning face down, and when Melanie goes, get better, the head like... And then she immediately barfs out like a shitload of water, and it comes out of her nose also. But as she's floating there on the top of the water like a dead bat. Love it. And she goes, I can swim. And cast Firebolt. (laughs) All right. Casting Firebolt at which one? The one that bit me. So the one that bit you, uh, Firebolt is a ranged spell attack, Yes. Oh, it's right up on me. So you will be, right. if you are casting within range, um, you will be at disadvantage. As a caster, there's no such thing as not, ca- I mean, hmm. I mean, there anything that makes it make a save isn't a ranged attack, or anything that has a touch range isn't a 
ranged spell attack. This is so hard. My other good spell is also going to get all of my friends. <laughs> Mind sliver. Mind get the sliver. brain. Get the brain. Intelligence check. Yeah, uh, that is a good one to target. They have a minus one on this, so that is an 11. Fail. Fail. All right. And this time, the... It's like, it doesn't feel anything crawl in its ear. It's just like a blanket of storm clouds around its brain going, you should have run. And it's going to take some damage. All right, let's see it. Five points of psychic damage. Five points as it rears up, shaking its head in confusion, disorientation, and pain. It's looking a little rough. That one's looking a little rough. And it's still within five feet of me? Yes. Is Melon also within five feet of me? Yes. She's going to kind of try to start, like, painfully swimming her way and kind of, like, scoop behind Melon as much as she can. With... So are you moving behind him? With which... Oh, that put me ten feet away, it wouldn't it? I was going to say, can I, use, can I use my reaction concern as a... Cleric, I don't really have other reactions, and her moving in combination to keep her within range and get her up top on me. Can I climb on top of Melon? That would, uh, if you climbed on top of Melon, that would allow you to, you would still be within five feet and therefore not provoke. Yeah, most, mostly she just wants to stop drowning. Cool. Because it so is yeah. kind of like watching, oh yeah, it's bad. It's it's the ugliest thing you've ever seen. So she's going to use her movement to wet drowning dog crawl up and like hang around Melon's neck. I, I'll be using my reaction to help her up. I was seeing it's like potentially it's like, okay, using that type of stuff could help Blade do that. Absolutely. So uh, Rot, you get up on top of Melon's shoulders. That will then bring up the second enormous serpent. Bodhi, you are on deck with Gromp following after. What's up? Um, no, no, Bodhi, you are on deck. The snake oh, on deck, first. on deck. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, I got super excited to stab this thing. I, I respect it and love it. My bad, my bad. It's time in the ring. This one to you once again. Don't have to do this. Let us take the prisoner back to Pavlona, and you may slither away. But while you mull your answer, it will try to wrap around you, and to all things there is balance, as I roll my first nap one of the night. Bitch, suffer! As it just swirls around you, unable to get purchase on your shell, and it just kind of, like a coil of rope, just kind of falls off the shell as it tried to bind around you. I actually have a good question regarding that. Take with it? Can we hold it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Unless it's something relevant right now. Oh, yeah. It's like, okay. as a shell, they can just go in there. Can they actually constrict a shell? You can. With a now one. You can certainly break a turtle. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want to, but anyone yeah, who's no. driven on a highway in the Midwest or the South knows you can uh, unfortunately squish a turtle. Yeah, yep. Hey, we saved a very fast turtle on the highway like two weeks ago. It was speeding. It was so spry. Um, but that is its go. It is going to stay within range of you so that it can continue trying to attack you. But that will bring Bodhi up with Gromp on deck. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think we will. I stab him. All right, roll to stab him. Fourteen. Fourteen, that'll hit. King the piercing. That is a massive attack as all three prongs pierce through the snake right underneath its enormous jaws. And no, it's stuck. It's, it's stuck. I got, the I got prongs of your uh, trident pierce and tear even more as you rip it forth from the snake's throat. You tell I got me in. All right. Then Gromp is up. 
Let's see what Gromp is going to do. Sing it a stupid song, Gromp! A good attack. And Gromp has used his bardic inspirations. So... When, when did he use bardic inspiration? To help you all during uh, certain tasks at the carnival. You haven't gotten a rest. I, oh my god, we, we have not slept. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, so he is going to pull his rapier out and is going to try to stab at the one that has been fighting with Melon and Rot. I, uh, Rot, I just want you to remember that I did this and, like, maybe, like, be, like, cool to me next time. Okay, stab! And... Did what? I was looking the other way. Damn it! Gets a... Oh! To all things, there is balance. I have gotten two natural 20s, one for Rot, or one for Gromp. So, it is only fitting that my second natural one is also for Gromp. And oh, no, I saw that. I definitely saw as that. As he stabs by, just like, you up. Uh, you said you didn't You didn't see that, right? You oh, didn't. no. I'm, I was looking right at it. Damn it! Don't look. I can't do it while you look. And that will bring us to the top of the initiative order. He doesn't have any bonus actions that I want to use. Grom, quote of the night, I can't do it if you look. <laughs> look, all right, we've all got our little holdups. And that is going to bring up the fairly damaged snake that is dealing with Rot, Melon, and Gromp as it rears back. Pathetic. Stop calling yourself names is going to miss with a bite at Gromp, getting a three on the die, so a total of a nine, as he dodges and pulls his hat down just out of biting distance from the snake. It will... Yep, it missed, so that's really all it can do. Auto is up, Melon is on deck, Rod is after. So, you know... It's all right, bud. See, look, he has performance issues, too. It's all right. Um, I'm going to bonus action rabbit hop up into the air because I can jump 10 feet without provoking an attack of opportunity, which puts me out of range to be able to shoot this thing with my bow. Sick. It does bunny hop provoke attacks of opportunity. As a bonus no. action. Nope. Without provoking opportunity to attack. Beautiful. 10 feet. Are you trying... So, you jump up in the air. You're uh, no, taking the shot, I'm, which I absolutely love this narrative. I just want to know what you're trying to do after so I can think ahead of there. Are you trying to land back on Bodhi? I'm going in the air. Okay, in the air, shoot, attack, whatever happens. But then I'm going to land back on Bodhi. Love it. All right. Boom. Take aim. Take your shot. Roll to hit. 10 plus 7, 17 to hit. 17 will With absolutely hit. 5 plus 3, 8 damage. 8 damage. As you... Oh, that's so friggin' cool, man. So I am giving you one luck point for that awesome narration Woo! and cool use of a racial stat there. As you jump up, shoot, and it pierces down. And as the snake hisses in pain as you land... Bodhi and Otto, you both see that it has pierced through the top part of the jaw. You can see the arrowhead inside the mouth as it... <sighs> <laughs> Anything else? That I can't hear you, but the taunting is appreciated I went, anyway. Nah. <laughs> All right, then that will bring Melon up, Rot on deck. <laughs> and smash the one ideally sending the arrow all the way through okay oh uh so that one is about 10 oh the other one yeah oh i thought it was this one. Oh, okay oh but it would have been so beautiful oh god it hey you can yes. move to it i will totally do it no 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 no, no. <laughs> so say with the i will eat you because i will Ooh, 25 to hit. Absolutely hits. Jesus Christ. 
Well, not max, but it's nine damage. Nine damage, okay. This one is, yeah, he's, it's looking pretty rough right now. If this snake looks up, the snake sees a lion who is thrilled. You smash out one of its large fangs from its jaws, and it goes... Don't let that sink, I want that! It plunks into the water, but you see where. Anything else from Melon? I think I'm staying there. There's nothing else going on, mind-wise. Right. Rot is up. Pure combat. I oh, I love it. Looming over them and Melon having just smashed it with his hammer. I think she's going to go, I think I'd prefer it cooked. And you can see a spark sparking like in the very back of her jaw and she looks up at it and releases a dragon breath of oh, flame up absolutely. into its face. Love it. If I recall, it makes a deck save. 18 on its deck save. I can't hear you for what it's worth. It definitely makes the save, but the flame is definitely still surrounding it. I think it's just too wet to catch. And with this one, it doesn't take half damage on a save, right? Moist. No? Okay. So, no, 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 as no. you open your, by comparison, quite small jaws, but very fierce, and the spark starts, it just <clears throat> descends into the water <clears throat> as you gout flame, and then it rises back out of the water, the fetid liquid from the swamp just pouring off of it as it rises five, eight, ten feet out of the water. As a bonus action, I think you can see some kind of arcane spark start around her neck and then dive down into her mouth as she consumes it. And she's going to turn two sorcery points back into a spell slot, preparing for its next attack. Very nice use of that. Is that the end of your turn, Rot? Yes, that's the end of my turn. Okay. That is the second snake's turn. Bodhi is on deck after that. The second snake is going to uh, try once again to bite at Bodhi, but only gets a 13. So, Bodhi, how do you prevent it from getting to you? Um, so, actually, his knee-jerk reaction was to um, angle his shell um, to where he was protecting Otto, specifically. Because you came back down, correct? You had to come back. We see Bodhi twist using his shield or his shell as a shield for himself and Otto. The enormous snake slams into the shell, smashing the front of its snout into the rock hard exterior of Bodhi's shell and rearing back once again in pain. All right, Bodhi is up. Gromp is next. I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna stab him with my trident. All right, roll to hit. Welcome to martial classes. Yeah. They're Never pretty sweet. I've never played a fighter before, so I figured I had to try. I rolled a smack, I rolled a smack, I rolled a smack. 15. Well hit. Ten damage. Ten more damage. Another clean strike as you just are harrying this snake. Every time it tries to get at you, boom, shield shell, stab, shield shell, stab. You're getting in a rhythm here with this snake, and it is not enjoying it. Persistent motherfucker. Mm -hmm. As it takes this stab and rears back, the two snakes exchange a glance to each other before continuing the attack. That will bring Gromp up. Gromp is going to once again try to stab at the snake. Rot! Don't look! Don't look! Damn it! <laughs> Stabs and does succeed, getting a 15 to hit. And will do 1d8 plus 3. 9 damage to this one. There is a... Sorry, I blinked. There is a gush of blood 
from the snake as he stabs and it just comes out of this little needle hole just right towards you all it is if it had legs they'd be wobbling firmly in the red this snake is but that is the end of Gromp's Go, which brings us to the top of the order, which means before you finish this snake off, it is going to get one more initiative. And it is going to, in response to that stab, try to constrict around Gromp. And as it starts to do that, Gromp snaps his fingers, and there is a... You don't know exactly what happens, but as the snake starts to wrap around, it lifts its head. He uses silvery barbs to make it re-roll that attack. And this time gets a four on the die, so unless his AC is crazy low. So no, a ten will not hit. Can I just say, fucking love silvery barbs. It's so I forgot good. What player I have doesn't? It. I forgot I have it. Hey, I'm just letting you know. Other spellcasters have it too. Not just players now. That is the pa- that is the trade off of players getting access to silvery totally barbs. Totally valid. And so oh my God. do the other spellcasters. But as a result, uh, he is able to just kind of push the coils off of him. The constrictor snake unable to get a good grip around him that will bring us now to auto auto the one right in front of you not looking great the one right in front of the other three of your team is looking really rough think the other ones they got it um question this d4 it doesn't go for damage right only for attack Correct. It can be used for an attack roll, not for damage. I don't need it. Um, That's so cocky. I love it. It is, because I rolled a 15 plus a 7, and then rolled a 4 plus 3 for damage. And this is with your short sword? Oh, no. I jumped again for bonus action. Jump up first. (laughs) That's so gross. I love it. What a brilliant use of that ability. Oh, it's amazing. Yep. And from above, uh, this time, as you jump, you hear, What's happening? Are you all still alive? Is anyone down there? Yeah, we're still alive. And uh, then shoot. And that was the damage? <laughs> um, four plus three. Another so seven. Okay. Getting close to about as rough as its friend. Uh, Melon is up. Rod is on deck. Oh, man, I want to eat this thing. I will eat this thing. Let's kill it. Okay. Let's roll. Uh, That's a natural fail. Nat one. (laughs) Oh, I totally moved that shit. To all things, there is balance. Could you please describe? Oh, I just straight up whiff and almost kind of trip over, but it's like... I. See if I can use my movement and or reaction to catch myself so I don't go prone. No need to do that. Um, but yes, just narratively, you whiff your uh, weapon going into the water. And oh, oh, like oh, a... The bloodlust is so high. It's like, He's oh, so I want to eat this so much. Giant snake is delicious. You can eat it like ribs. And as you just barely managed to catch yourself from whirling and falling oh. into the waters. Oh. That will, it, do you have any bonus action or movement? I'm gonna stay in front of this thing. It's like, why would I move? Respect, rot. Those were two separate sentences for the record. Respect, I understand. Rot, not respect, rot. No, no, you respect me. I respect oh, no. you. That's a command, respect, world. rot. No, no, yeah, it's, hold on, command, respect me. <laughs> you see 27. That's a fair use of command. Respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. So if, I, if I use a spell that doesn't require saving throw, it's a disadvantage, correct? If it is listed as ranged spell attack. If it has a range listed uh, next to it. So, for example, your... Mind Slipper is not a ranged spell attack. Yeah, but 
It just doesn't have the oomph I want. So I think I'm going to try Firebolt at disadvantage. Might as well. Which are you throwing it at? The one right in front of us that Melon just fell on his face into the water to try to hit. Wonderful. So roll with disadvantage. She's looking at it going, I will feed this to Melon. <laughs> Joe, I will give you my last two luck points to give it a plus one. Okay, I'll take it. Here we All go. Yours. Disadvantage. All yours. Did you get it? One was a nat 20, oh. <laughs> obviously, but the other one was a 13. 13. So even without, is that uh, with the plus one? Or just. Oh, I didn't, need, I didn't oh, need the plus one. Cool. Um, so that so later, is, I said I gave it to you. Hit. So let's see that sweet, sweet damage. I, the kind of the falling over gave you a bit more of a stable platform. 10 damage. Ooh, all right. Could you please paint a word picture of how you crispify this first snake? I think because it dodged her fire breath before and it came up and Melon, I think Melon tried to hit it while it was coming out of the water. So it was just a little bit slippy slidey while it was re-emerging after submerging after her flame breath. Uh, I think that she sees it dodge all that and goes, you will be delicious, Crispy. And goes, poof. Delicious and shoots crispy. this moat of flame right into its mouth as it's diving for her to bite. And it goes straight down all the snake and explodes right in its neck area and just blows the entire head straight off. Ooh, brutal, brutal. As bonus action, can I use my movement to catch the head? <laughs> so you blast uh, at it and sever the neck quite cleanly and the head is pretty large so yeah on you that's about right and the rest of and the as body... i'm holding the head i want to make eye contact with gromp yeah that's how you do it the rest of the body which was about not counting the head about six feet out of the water stays in its attack position for a second before loosening and just uncoiling under the water. That is awesome. And that will also, unless there is anything else, bring up the lone remaining snack. The lone remaining snack is going to try once more to attack Bodhi. Cocked. A 16 on the die. Or a 16 total, excuse me. 16 total. Doesn't that miss you? You have a 17, right? Yeah. Okay. It's giving the middle finger to say, fuck you guys. Oh, I, 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 a middle finger can mean so many things. Her uh, tongue was out and smiling. That's Just fair. Me, she fucked uh, you. <laughs> but so again goes to slam into and bite Bodhi, unable to get any purchase through the very tough exterior of the turtle shell. Thick shell energy! Well, let's see that thick shell energy in uh, in the in the works. So, you are up. See it in action. Deliver. Before, before Bodhi. Bodhi goes to oh. attack, I want to I wanna say finish it. I'm just going to whisper to Bodhi so you finish it. Boogie and Canyon. Is he close to me or far? Still right next to you. Oh, that's easy. I mean, you know, I mean, I just, I mean, I, I, I just got. I'm going to look at you doing this over the head of my giant snake and just go finish him. Come on. And I'm going to aim for his eyeball. Roll to hit. A 22. That will absolutely hit. Five humble damage. A very respectable amount of damage. With that very respectable amount of damage, could you paint me one final picture here? So, on the tip of Bodhi's trident, he dries herbs. Um, now that he's gone through all of this muck, he stabbed these snakes. All you can see is blood caked on the strings where his herbs were. And as he whips it towards him, 
um, to do this final blow, the blood splatters just ever so gently uh, on his face. And he goes, well, told you we weren't going to give him up. And he's just going to put his entire weight forward into this uh, trident stab digging into his body as far as he Pin can. Pin him against the tower! Um, so yeah. So he's pinning him against the tower and he's just gonna go fuck with us. And he twists it! The, so, the scraping <laughs> sound this is good. that you all hear. You're not sure if it's the scraping of metal against stone or metal against bone. But the result is the same either way as Bodhi stabs through and you feel all of the weight of this huge snake go onto your trident and you pull back, a strange thing happens as it collapses, poosh, splashing into the water. Its body, from head to under the water, which you cannot see, turns to stone. Strange. No! Well, I'll be honest, that did not feel as good as I thought it would when that happened. Don't touch the tower. Bodhi? Can't... Nope. Was that you? Nope. Bodhi. And he's gonna back up slowly. Back up. He's gonna, he's got his trident nooked underneath his elbow, mm -hmm. and he's holding auto, and he's moving back. He's Get to not... them, friends. Yes, you're all doing great. Stab, stab. Get to them. Very well done! I, I don't hear any more screaming or hissing. Hello? Hello? No, Mark, we're, we're, we're done. We killed them. Oh, the, yes! The, well done! Well done! Never doubted you all for more than a moment or two. But other than that, not a doubt in my mind. Well done! Congratulations! Now, um, about my being in a cage in a basket at the, uh, dangling from a tower. Apparently, yeah, a tower I... that turns sh anything that touches it to stone. What? What do you mean? Don't. Yeah, it's, 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 it means don't touch it. Well, I, 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 I shall not. Hey, Ethan. Huh? Mm -hmm. The one that Rot and I were going after, is it still right there and is it still flesh? Uh, it went partially under the water, but as you go and I touch it. I want it. Um, yes, it is still under the water and flesh. Oh. It is also, like I remind you, chins. about 13 feet long, five feet wide, and multiple hundreds of pounds. I don't care. I'm going to lift up the portion I can. I'm going to start eating it. All right. That meat. I've been desiring bed. meat for a while now. As you, uh. as you start to chow down on this there is a sudden crowd of flies that starts just buzzing around you melon auto we, we could have cut it up and, and made it easier for you don't no don't don't look at him look at me huh? auto huh how high can you jump at this point, it'd be better off just to throw me. At the melon? Thing no, melon, spit that out. Spit uh -huh. it out. Spit it out. Uh, uh. Put it down. Oh. She is still clutching the head of this giant snake, by the way. Uh. So, uh, should we help this fucking guy? Or? That would be very appreciated. Yes. Yeah, yo. Help I this probably go fucking help him. guy. I, you yeah, sorry, guy. I can remember your name. Sir Dog Dog Trapped. Yeah. Sir Tavlar. No, it's Tavlar. pretentious now. It's Sir Pretentious. Uh, all right. Sir Todd. My <laughs> name One is second. Sir Tavlar, an esteemed member of the Seely Court and a loyal vassal of the Summer Queen. Well, see, guy, shit, and he puts Otto down, and he goes over there immediately, and he's gonna try to try to get him out. He's probably like, well, he's high. Melon, yeah. spit it out in my hand. Spit it out. You can't carry this, and you know it. I know. Spit. What's in your mouth? Put it in my hand. Nothing. No, I ate it. Okay, fine. 
I'd like to take a chunk of the snake he's clinging to, just a bit of meat, and throw it at the tower. Just at the tower? Yeah, I want to see what happens when it hits the side. <laughs> meat. Meat. Can I just say, new raiders? Oh, got new raiders? And hey, welcome in, crew. Thank Raider. you so much for joining us. We appreciate you, all of you, raiding from the Ariana Abyss. Uh, appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for raiding from the abyss. We love you. Abyss raiders. You I'm gonna go back right to eating this snake. As our party just finished combat with two giant constrictor snakes and find themselves in a fetid swamp beneath a very precariously leaning tower, atop of which hangs a wicker basket, and from inside that the calls of help from one Sir Tavilar. Well, you gotta get him out. I gotta get him out. Yeah, I know. What do you think we've been trying to do? Just having fun? Having a picnic? Bodhi? Yes. <laughs> okay. No. We... What? Oh. Picnic seed blankets. This isn't a picnic. One. Otter, do you think you weigh more or less than me? Keith, Bodhi threw me in the water. Like, I'm only three foot tall. Like, this is a deep water. Like, I'm saying you I'm don't, Jelly. Like, no, I'm just, still a lot of water I, in there. She's, she's like literally clinging around Melon's neck with her claws like in his mane going, who do you think weighs more? Probably. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll grab I'll grab I I'll go ahead one and then rotten the other and I'll see which one is heavier. Like one in one area, one in the other. Which one is heavier? I weigh about 120 pounds. Probably about the same, maybe less, because she's so thin. You're less. You jump higher. Wait, how, wait, hold on, wait, pause. Let me, wait, hold on. No, let me not guess that because I did write it down. Oh. No, I weigh 103 pounds. That's what I'm putting. I weigh 103. Sorry. <laughs> I wrote down that I weigh 95. She's anorexically thin. Oh, the same answer. Throw them both. Just figure it out. Just throw them both. Just kidding, Toronto. I think you he, 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 he recovered the least. I mean, uh, we could also just take this as an idea for what it's worth. Um, be, not that I don't think that's a great idea. It's a great idea, and I would love to be here to watch it. But maybe, like, we've only been on this one side of the tower, and, you know, most towers do have ways inside. Like, maybe we could look at the other side of the tower. Stop talking! Okay. Mage Hand. Mage Hand what? I cast it. Okay. Or did she just say he made a chant and then nothing happened for a second? Oh no, she says it out loud after she put her whole hand over Gromp's mouth to make him stop talking. Also, hey, what happened to that meat you threw at the tower? Turned stayed meat and then fell in the water. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, Mage Hand is going to slowly go up into the basket and feel around. How much does the cage and its contents weigh? Well, it's a little tough, because with Mage Hand, you do have to be able to see things. Um, I can see the basket, you can and see it the basket. can kind of reach over the basket and pat around, if I can still see the stump. Um, you can see it patting around. Does it dispel when I can't see it, or does it keep going, I just can't tell what it's doing? Um, yeah, because it's not like you can feel through the hand. Right, but if it's not it's not an invisible hand, so No, it's we, not. So if the person in the cage can go a little bit more forward, can scream a little more forward. So does it dispel when I can't see it? No. Okay. Oh, uh it does vanish when it's more than thirty feet away from you. But luckily, but if I'm it sitting is, on melon. It is the basket itself is within thirty feet. Okay. So it goes in the basket, I can't see it. Would would you direct it until it's Got the cage. Oh, oh that was unexpected. Hello, hand. Um, it's the flaming red claw hand. Oh, that is incredibly uncomfortable. And you want me to make it come closer to? Yes, of 
course. Uh, I can't see it. You have to give me some direction. A little, little uh, for, forward, forward, left. Yes, that's it. Little more. There, it's uh, now on top of my enclosure. It sounds like one of those web-based train games. You grab and you instruct it to try to pull and uh, it doesn't it isn't able to lift it up. Ah! What what is happening? What is, what what it's shaking me. Is it supposed to be shaking me? Are you fat? I am not fat. Yeah. I keep a People very diet. rigorous workout regimen lift- and I watch my dietary intake. All I right, spelt- you've been working out too much. I can only lift 10 it's pounds. It's a mental a cage. Well, it might have been cable. aluminum. I don't think it is aluminium or whatever it was that you said. Melon, throw me up, please. <laughs> He's just so put out. <laughs> just... I can't, though. I'm holding... Throw me. I can man. swim now. Put me down. I thought we wanted to look at the other side as well, though. No, it was Grump's idea, and we should never trust Grump's ideas. But Hold on, no, no, you still can do hey guys, that, but I'm just going to be guys, up there. Guys, looks like there's a door here, and Grump is on the other side of the tower while you have been messing with the mage hand, and it's just standing around the other side, just pointing. Yeah, there's a door. Yes, but we also watched the snake turn to stone when they hit the tower. I mean, that's fine. You all do what you want. I'm just giving you information. I'm not telling you what to do with it. It's just there's... And I feel around on the ground, see there's a stick as I go, and I'm letting these two go to swim on their own. I mean, yeah, Thank or you. you can just reach to a nearby tree if you want. But if Yeah, because they... I'm also grabbing the snake that I dropped because I want to keep munching on that. You, if I'm you gonna want go to drag here. that snake, you are going to need to make me a strength check. I'm going to be going slower, but it's like I'm going to go as far as I well, can. Because you're it. already moving through five feet of water and trying to drag a 700 pound thing. Or how about this? I'll pick it back up, take a couple more bites of it, and then go. Hey, that that works. God, I love meat. All right. So, oh, I'm with Gromp. You had I'm with Gromp. Okay. Yeah. And I legitimately I'm offer buddy. Rot some. It's got swamp water on it. I take a fresh bite so then there's fresh meat exposed. No, I'll have it later. So what are you all doing? It is going to get worse. So what you doing, other than eating snake? Stick. Door. I would like to try to enter the tower if I see where the entrance is. I mean, or find a way to get to this this basket, this cage. Or Melon, you poke the door with your stick. Nothing happens. Doesn't turn to stone or anything like that. And then Bodhi, you wade forward and push the door open, the water flooding into the interior of the tower. And as you enter, it seems like the tower is entirely empty, other than a flight of spiral stairs, a spiral around the inside wall up to an opening about 30 or 35 feet up. Can I doggy paddle over to Bodhi? It's not pretty. Bodhi. Me? I had a thought. Yeah? Because if intelligence was ranked on a scale of 1 to 20, mine would be approximately a 16. 17, my mistake. Well, I took a head, I took a blow to the head today. It's a seventeen. <laughs> Is your trident magical? Tragically, no. Hmm. I mean, spirit. You know, it feels magical, so I I tell it that it's. A magical. vibe does not a magic weapon make. Well, the intention fucking counts, I think. That's where the damn magic is, right? Well, it didn't turn the chunk of meat into stone. It turned to stone when it was on your trident. Okay, we can test this. Is there any any floating bit of snake? Not in here. The dislodged chunk. There is some um, in 
Melon's hand. And I just... <laughs> Bring it in ever so slowly and... Boop. You... I'm Touch. getting a tension about that. I want this and I'm eating it. Shh, shh, shh. Science is very important. As the... One of the prongs of the trident touches the meat. Nothing happens. Um, and then I did, uh, yeah, it's not my fucking trident. I, fucking, I told you, it's nothing but magic fire. It's not magic core. Maybe it has to do with murderous intent. Mm -hmm. We'll discuss this later. As you all... Fair enough. Do you, do you want to lift up there? Or? There are stairs. Yo, oh, there's some stairs. You want me to toss you over there? Because you look like a giant fucking rat. But hey, gold star for you. Boop. She because you learned how to rat. swim today. It's nice. You learned how to swim today. Hmm. I thought you were talking to Otto. I've always known how to swim. Don't make this about... Don't be catty. Did you don't call be me catty. a rat? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's yeah, up? <laughs> Otto, Boy, as you are the first who ascends the steps, you are the first then to emerge to the very slanted now roof of the tower. And oh. as you orient yourselves, you orient yourself, you see the ropes from which the basket was dangling. And you lean over. You are finally able to get a look at the individual who has been speaking to you. Inside a cage about, I know you can't see my hand, so this is entirely pointless, um, about three and a half feet, maybe four feet in height, gleaming silver, this cage. Inside is a purple and pink fairy dragon. He is wearing gauntlets on his forearms, a sword belted around his hip and a medallion around his neck. But the one feature that I very much want to point out is that he has a relatively long and curled mustache along with a little patch here going with a musketeer style uh, bit of facial hair. And as you look down... Dapper, sir. As you look down, Sir Tavilar looks up to you. Oh, it is wonderful to finally put a face to the voice. I am Sir Tavilar, at your service, so long as it doesn't interfere with the service of the Summer Court. Could you possibly help me from this precarious situation? I believe I heard one of the ropes beginning to fray. Thank you for listening to The Wild Beyond. Our players are Lauren as Bodhi, Devon as Gromp, Joe as Rot, Morgan as Melon, and Mav as Otto. Today's episode, along with all past episodes, can be watched on our YouTube, Thousand Faces Cosplay. Please be sure to check out our other actual play on Go Buff Yourself, The City of the Crimson Tower, if you like a darker, more horror-themed campaign. Thank you again for being here, and until we see you next time, stay wild.